Relájate. Experimenta. This is our tiny little racing drone. I'm not sure uh, how you say it in Spanish. It's uh, Carreras de Drones. Um, and this is my lovely wife, and hopefully she'll be able to translate if you guys can't understand. So uh, basically, uh, we started making uh, racing drones about a year and a half ago. Um, and we've decided to try and make the world's smallest racing drone that can compete with the larger drones. So uh, without further ado, this is the Atom. It's pretty much indestructible. It can go about 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, and you can see what it sees through a camera on the front that's either visible on the screen or through the goggles over there. So you would have seen the drone racing track over there. Uh, I think tomorrow is when the racing starts, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll be racing the Atom there. But uh, I'll tell you a little bit of a history about the Atom and how we got into making drones. So recently we did an Indiegogo campaign. It finished about a month ago and we raised uh, $178,570. Uh, we were planning to release it about a year ago, but uh, it takes a long, long time to actually do a crowdfunding cam pro campaign properly. But uh, fortunately we got funded and uh, we are about to start delivering the first units. These are the prototypes uh, in about a month from now. So it's a pretty exciting time for us. Our company, RotorX, is actually based in Australia, out of Sydney, uh, but we do distribution out of Hong Kong through a partner company called Team Black Sheep. So uh, they're very famous in the drone world, and historically we've been involved in the DIY community, so people who make their own drones, not people who buy like a DJI Phantom. So I'm going to start with our Indiegogo video. It'll give you a good explanation of the product, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Oh, you need sound on that. Okay. This is drone racing, the newest, most intense, heart pounding extreme sport today that anyone can enjoy. Bridge the gap from virtual to reality so you can race your friends and experience the world like never before. Introducing the Rotorex Atom V2, the ultimate micro drone. Small enough to take and fly anywhere, Rotorex micro drones are optimized for fast speed, superb handling, and breathtaking power. Fly anywhere, anytime. The Atom weighs less than 5 ounces, well under 250 grams, so no FAA registration is necessary. It fits in the palm of your hand. Most drones are too expensive or flimsy to enjoy to their full potential. The Atom is reliable, resilient, safe, and affordable. Crash it over and over and over again. Its lightweight carbon fiber construction makes it the most durable racing drone on the planet. All components are easily repairable, customizable, and readily available. The Atom is equipped with an industry-leading FPV system, meaning you pilot the Atom via a real-time video feed with no latency over huge distances. An optional HD camera provides stunning 1080p video recording. Choose between a complete ready-to-fly system out of the box or build it and customize it yourself with our DIY kit. No matter your skill level, the Rotorex Atom is a perfect fit. Rotorex, the world is your racetrack. Okay, um, so what sets the Atom apart from other drones, obviously besides its size, is that it's completely manually controlled. So does anyone here have a drone already? Uh, yeah, you've got a drone? Uh, are they like aerial photography drones or are they toy drones or big, small? So the problem with a large drone is that it's, uh, the, the bigger it is, the more dangerous it is. And the more dangerous it is, 
the less fun it is to fly. So when you're trying to fly your very expensive drone, you're quite terrified about what's going to happen. So the idea was to make a drone that was so small that it was indestructible, um, and it was based solely on having fun. So instead of um, hovering the drone in one position, the idea is to put the goggles on and fly it like it's a little jet plane, basically. So everything we do is based around fun. Um, but we have absolutely no right to be uh, drone manufacturers. None of us in Rotorex are engineers. And I'll give you a little bit of a history about what I did before I made drones. So I've got a quite a long history. Um, I didn't actually finish my university degree, but uh, I went on a long path uh, of trying many different professions and things that I enjoyed. So. Uh, IT support, uh, not very fun, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, professional gaming was a lot of fun, but uh, it's not very good for making money. Uh, I helped uh, develop Counter-Strike, which you'll find over the other side there. Uh, game design, graphic design, galaxy simulators, one hand typing software, augmented reality, 3D rendering, and eventually becoming a drone pilot. But what I mostly did was real estate marketing. So, oh, whoa. one second. Uh, basically, creating images in 3D uh, using uh, materials and lighting to try and help sell apartments and things like that. It's very, it's very common these days. I did it for about 20 years, and it gave me a very good understanding of 3D and how to create things that people would enjoy and uh, creates an emotional experience. So, I translated that into purchasing my own DJI Phantom. Uh, which was supposed to get me shots like this next one. Oh. Uh oh. Sorry. So this is completely 3D rendered. Um, it's the kind of work that we did for, for money, but we used to use helicopters to get the footage required. But we found that drones was a much better platform for it, but. Uh, Unfortunately, there's a lot of regulation with flying drones, so I got a little bit frustrated with it, but I did get some really nice footage along the way. So I tried a few tricky things with 3D and drones. Uh, originally, I bought this drone. Unfortunately, it flew away with my GoPro uh, and never came back. So I got another drone, uh, which was this one. Uh, it's called a Discovery Pro. It was by Team Black Sheep. And I built it myself, as you can see. It's not very pretty. Um, and it's got a housing here for a GoPro with a, a stabilized gimbal. So what I tried to do is create some compelling 3D footage combined with drone footage. So I'll show you the next one. The coldest peak, I feel it now. I'm looking down. Your face to me, and I see red and melody coming back me up. What's that, baby? All my love, feel it close. It's close enough. The greatest view, the greatest. So as you can see, um, it's pretty powerful technology when you combine a drone with 3D rendering. Um, it's kind of an augmented reality space which we were involved in. 
Um, and I got quite attached to flying my very expensive drone. It was about $5,000, but every time I went for a fly, I would, I would shake like a leaf, I would sweat, I'd be terrified of losing it. I'll show you this next clip and it'll give you some idea. That was fun, uh, a little bit terrifying. Uh, it went against my wife's best wishes. She didn't want me going and losing everything that I'd invested in, but uh, the more dangerous it was, the more I really wanted to find some way of uh, enjoying the drone a little bit more than hovering around. It got a little bit boring after a while. So I've met some people, uh, this is back in 2013, before drone racing even existed. Um, and we set up some things in the field and I tried to use my aerial photography drone as a racing drone. So uh, this is what happened there. Oh, 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 oh. Something like that. So this is pretty much the limits of the drone which I had, and every time I crashed, it cost me about 200 US dollars in carbon fiber propellers and, and repairs and everything. So it was a little bit frustrating, but uh, definitely a lot of fun. So uh, in Vancouver where I was living, I was lucky enough to meet a whole bunch of other drone pilots uh, who were at a fairly similar level to me. Some of them already made racing drones, uh, large ones, so I came up with the idea of let's make the smallest racing drone we can and see how it went from there. So we went from a, a $5,000 investment and started creating racing drones out of an indoor paintball field. And this is a promo video we made for drone racing before anyone even really knew about it. So this is called the Rotor X Playground.
Okay, so uh, my design effort started with uh, making a hexacopter, uh, and this is one of the first versions. And using 3D software called 3D Studio Max and V-Ray, I was able to come up with a lot of prototype shapes and start exploring the, the, the space of drone design. Uh, the first drone we created was called the Raiju. Uh, it was a palm-sized drone. Uh, it was designed to be kind of like a small Ferrari of, of racing drones. And uh, it was also very indestructible. But this is the big brother of the Atom. And the Raiju is based on Japanese mythology. It's actually Raiden's pet, if anyone knows uh, Mortal Kombat. And we started making that one out of the indoor paintball field. We also created our own motors and propellers that were as small as imaginable. And we actually got heavily cloned in the Chinese markets by everyone copying our products. We, um, we were trying to make the carbon fiber molded by hand, so what we came up with was a 3D printed technique with a top and bottom mold out of a flexible material. And we sandwiched the carbon fiber in there and then hand cut out the carbon fiber and hand sanded it down and came up with a result something like this. It was about an hour's work per canopy, but it was, uh, it was quite satisfying. Uh, this is our glamorous office. Uh, Dan's doing some carbon fiber work. Ross is a star pilot. And Abby, the drone-hating dog, is sitting over there. Uh, it's quite ironic having a pet that hated drones. Uh, and this was the finished result. So um, it ends up looking quite sleek. It's all carbon fiber. It takes about six hours to build by hand. So uh, a quite expensive price point too. It was about $600 for the Raju. So it was very high-end technology, but uh, we needed to make something a little bit cheaper. So this gives you an idea of scale. This is a normal drone racing size, about 250 to 300. And then that's the very first Atom that's called 122 size. Uh, which is the measure in distance from motor to motor in the corners. Uh, the durability is a big factor. Most of these drones can't survive one crash, whereas the Atom can. So this is where we started off and started selling the Atom uh, as a DIY kit. I have a, I have a time lapse here of someone doing the build. To give you an indication of how hard it is to make. So you could see how it could be quite frustrating for some of our customers to make it themselves. It's quite a lengthy procedure. I'm going to bring my wife in to help translate so that everyone can understand what I'm saying a bit better. Hola, mira, voy a empezar a traducir porque creo que es un poco difícil de entender. Les australiano tiene la voz como que demasiado gruesa. Entonces voy a empezar a traducir un poco. You ready? Uh, in the interest of science, I decided that I needed to test out just how much more safe these small drones were. La idea de empezar a hacer uno de estos drones chiquitos es porque los grandes eran muy peligrosos. Entonces, la idea de él fue hacer un test donde agarró un, uno de esos drones y lo voló contra él mismo. Entonces, este es el video. So, around this time, the Ice Bucket Challenge was very popular, so I called out a bunch of famous pilots and told them to do the same challenge. Calling out you, Trappy, TBS, I've also got Shapu, and uh, Richard Shelton. So, here we go. 
Glasses on. All in the name of science. Uh, I got a little bit of a hate online for that. People thought that I was being unsafe, but uh, there was no damage to me and there should be no damage to anyone else. So people want drones around, but they don't want them to be dangerous. So this is the, the best size for uh, a drone to do anything, really. Mucha gente piensa que los drones son peligrosos, que si te chocan contra ti, que no sé, te van a cortar o va a hacer mucho daño. Entonces la idea detrás de este video fue como que para, para dar ver que si te choca es safe, o sea, es el, el más safe de todos los drones. So after a while we finally got prototypes built and a group of friends together to race. So we got our first race going and, and this is the result of the footage. Esta es la primera este, carrera de drones que hicieron entre ellos. So that was a lot of fun, uh, but we only had like five prototypes, so we needed to start selling them online. And this is our Instagram feed. Uh, up in the very top left corner was the very first post on Instagram to have drone racing as a hashtag. And everything else from there is kind of a continuation of the development of our very small company. de ellos de su Instagram. En la primera foto aquí arriba fue la primera foto en usar el hashtag Carrera de Drones y fue en el 2013 creo que fue. Eh, en lo que estaban viendo antes era el video de todos los prototipos. Después de que tuvieron los prototipos y hicieron la carrera, decidieron empezar su compañía Rotorex. So anyone who owns a drone knows that it's quite hard to find a place to fly your drone. Um, one of the major benefits of a small drone is there's a lot more places to fly. Mucha de las eh, dificultades de las personas que tienen un drone es de buscar un lugar donde se pueda eh, volar porque es grande, eh, la gente se siente que es muy peligroso. Entonces uno de los beneficios de los drones chiquitos es que literalmente lo puedes volar en cualquier lado. Um, and finally, we, uh, we started getting a nice crew of pilots together that were quite highly skilled. So we found ourselves um, in the position of having some of the best drone racing footage before anyone else. So this is one of our best videos with some of the best pilots in the world currently.
the bottom left is what the pilot sees there. La cámara de chiquita es como se ve cuando el piloto está volando. Y uno de los beneficios de tener un dron chiquito es que se puede volar en áreas así porque los drones grandes son muy caros y chocan, pues te cuesta como 200 dólares repararlo. prototipo el Raiju uh, we've, we've got a lot of uh, experience once we started racing we uh, is anyone familiar with the TV show Breaking Bad does anyone know yes show Breaking okay. Bad. we decided it was a great idea instead of spending money on marketing to buy a Breaking Bad RV and drive it from Vancouver all around the states Después de ver ese show, ellos decidieron que hubiese sido buena idea si compraban un RV como el de Breaking Bad y lo viajaron desde Vancouver hasta Los Ángeles. Este era el RV. Hicieron como un tour promocional. Uh, so in the van was two Australians, uh, both part of Rotorex. Probably going to be lost in translation, but I'll show the very start. They have a YouTube series made traveling around in this uh, rather dirty RV. Empezaron como un show de YouTube de series del de viaje de ellos. Los dos que hicieron un viaje fueron unos australianos medio locos, entonces por eso es como cómico. Here we are, waiting to go through customs. Hopefully they let us in the country, eh, Ross? If they don't, we'll have to try another border crossing. I think we're going to have to skip this part. It's going to be a bit hard for you guys to hear, but uh, it's all on YouTube on our Rotorex channel. Uh, so when you go drone flying, you end up with a lot of gear, and part of the challenge was to reduce the amount of equipment you needed to carry. So this was, uh, for five pilots, uh, a lot of equipment. So once we'd started selling the Raju, we decided the Atom was the, the best way to go. Uh, it was much cheaper, less components. Uh, and this is what it looked like we had a unit that worked with the PlayStation controller. One of the things that was difficult when we started to do drones was that there were many, well, you had to carry literally maletas of eh, products, of control remotes, of pilas. So one of the ideas that Martin had for the drone chiquito es de compactar todo y tener un dron y para poder salir rápido un dron y un control y eso es todo lo que se necesitaría. And all of the software is being developed open source. So as the hardware developed, so did the pilots abilities to do extreme acrobatics. So this is Moak, one of the best uh, acrobatic pilots in the world. Este es uno de los mejores pilotos de acrobatics. <laughs> Most other drones are designed around carrying a GoPro, so we decided to ignore the GoPro and use much smaller cameras. The quality wasn't quite there, but it meant you could do things like this. Muchos de los otros drones están concentrados a tener un GoPro. Este tiene una cámara interna que también es HD, entonces no se necesita. Por eso puede ser un poco más ágil cuando está volando. So as you can see, it's slightly different to flying a Phantom or uh, an aerial photography drone. I'm going to skip through because I think we're running out of time. Uh, so 
We now have about a thousand customers and they submitted a whole bunch of footage to us to win uh, prizes. So this is a compilation of their footage. Ya a este, a este punto tenían como mil suscriptores y clientes, entonces decidieron hacer una competencia eh, donde ellos me suscribían sus videos para ganar un dron. Y estos son los videos que suscribieron. This is unfortunately where I lost a drone down a hole. Aquí en este hueco él tenía un prototipo, uno nada más y lo perdió en este hueco. Part of the job. So we teamed up with Team Black Sheep to create the version 2 of the Atom that takes half an hour to build instead of 6 hours. Al principio cuando empezaron para construir uno de estos drones se tomaba 6 horas. Después de que hicieron un partnership con este Black Sheep, ahora se puede construir en menos de 30 minutos. And the real groundbreaking uh, part is the combination with a controller that has the video built in. So instead of buying goggles and a controller and a drone, everything comes in this nice, neat little package. La idea de ellos es hacer eh, este hobby un poco más accesible eh, a todo el mundo. Entonces lo que decidieron hacer es este control remoto. La diferencia es que tiene video, entonces no se necesita también comprar esto que vendría aparte. En vez se compra el dron y viene con el control. And this is how a pilot would fly with the uh, controller. Así es que se vería si uno es el piloto. Uh, so this is what the version 2 ended up looking like. It's got a polycarbonate canopy, a uh, carbon fiber frame, and fully modular internal electronics. Este es el segundo prototipo, pero dijo cosas muy técnicas, yo no entendí eso. prototipo y entonces les va a dar una demostración de cómo es el dron chiquito. You can see here the video feeds you get in real time. It's not HD, but it's called uh, SD or analog, so that you have no delay in your video. So you can avoid objects like these.
So next steps for us after delivering our Indiegogo campaign is some uh, new products. Uh, we've got our own HD camera coming as well. So yeah, keep an eye out for it and uh, we'll do questions uh, right now. Si tienen preguntas, yo, yo les hago la traducción. ¿Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? ¿Sí? Uh, ¿Qué controladora de vuelo utilizan? Controladora de vuelo. Uh, it's using uh, something called uh, an F3 flight controller. Uh, it's an F3 flight controller from Team Black Sheep. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you a unit. It's it's Naze based. It's an evolution of the Naze. Got lots of electronics and uh, stuff. And a whole custom team black sheep electronics. Uh, any other questions? Anyone? The electronics from the Vendetta in a much smaller form. Uh, it's very modular. You can build it in three minutes. Um, which is the duration of the battery? So the duration of the battery. Uh, it depends on how you fly. Uh, Three minutes is the minimum if you're 100 percent throttled. Uh, you could fly up to 10 minutes, but normally after five minutes, uh, so much adrenaline you need to sit down for a while. Uh, so it's, it's quite stressful. Three minutes if you fly a million, and five minutes if you fly a little faster. But he says that the adrenaline is too much, so after three minutes it's better to sit down. Anyone else? The price. What's the price? What's the price? Um, in the Indiegogo campaign, it was 300 for the drone and 200 for the controller. So $500 altogether. So very competitive. Especially the drone has an on screen display, so you can control all of the features, um, change all the settings. And you can see a readout of uh, battery and time and everything else. So it's very high tech. It's probably the most advanced racing drone there is. $300 for the drone and $200 for the control. In the control, it says the battery and I don't know, other things there. But it's very competitive, especially because the DAGI I think is $500 and you can do everything you do with this drone. Any more questions? Has anyone tried drone racing yet? Yeah? Are you racing over there later on? Uh, you should come back tomorrow, three days. Uh, we'll be racing the Atom there along with some of the best pilots coming in from the States. Uh, so there'll be three days of qualifying if you guys come back. Um, and if you ask me, I might let you have a go. If you want to try. Anyone else? <laughs> You're down? You don't have to pay for it because you can't break it. That's it. Oh. Alguna página de internet donde conseguir los frames? Rotoraxracing.com. Puedes ver. Aunque muchos tenemos resellers, entonces puedes ir también a Team Black Sheep. Y allí también puedes encontrar los drones. ¿Perdón? Sí, mundial, mundial. And uh, I'm here with Dan and... Are we good? Anyone else? Last chance? All right, guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll see you racing one of these some stage soon. Okay, bye.